Hey guys, welcome back. So uh, this week we're going to be looking at, finally I've been, I've been meaning to do like an Iron Maiden song for a while. So uh, it's the week that the live albums come out, the Mexico live album. And I thought, what a better, not, what a better song not to do than Aces High, which is the opening track of that new live album. Also, obviously, the opening track of Iron Maiden's fourth album, Power Slave. And obviously, the legendary Live After Death as well, with the brilliant Churchill speech just beforehand. Um, so anyway, so I thought today we'll look at the solo, and I will actually be doing the rhythm as well, I thought, uh, in another video, uh, in, a, in, a, in a second video for this song. So this, for this absolutely great, great Maiden song as well. Uh, probably one of their quickest songs as well. Um, and the solos are not too difficult, so I would say probably an intermediary level. Uh, the good thing about this, uh, this particular solo is, so basically you're going to have Dave Murray doing his first solo, and then straight away you've got uh, Adrian Smith solo coming in right after that. Good thing is there's a lot of really f quick flashy little licks to uh, take out from here that you can reuse in your own solo. Uh, so we'll have a quick, uh, quick look at all those things. So without much further ado, let's have a quick look at a little cover I did of both those solos one after the other. And then we'll come back and, um, and have a breakdown of the solos. All right, see you in a minute. Right, okay. All right, so let's just delve straight into Dave Murray's solo. Uh, so he kicks off, kicks off the, uh, the festivities with a great little solo as well. Uh, so let's have a quick look at it, and then we'll break it down lick by lick. All right, so here's the first lick. Alright, so uh, we're in the key of A for Dave, so Dave, Dave Murray's solo is in the key of A and Adrian Smith's solo later on will be in the key of B, so there's a key switch in between. So let's have a quick look at what's going on here. So it's very much a very boxed um, A minor pentatonic kind of lick to start with, very bluesy as well. Uh, Dave Murray's a master of sort of taking blues licks and actually transferring them into a more metal context. So how does he begin this solo? He begins this solo with a double stop, with a unison bend on the seventh fret of G and the fifth fret of B. So what you need to do here, you need to keep your first finger steady here and then bend the fifth, the seventh fret of G into a unison bend. Now, the thing about unison bend, it's a little bit of a sort of, a uh, little bit of a sort of um, red herring. Yes, it's meant to be unison, i.e. by the time you've done the bend, you're meant to sound exactly the same as a note that you're holding down on the B string. But actually the better, the better sound, the better, the better, uh, unison bend is when you get the slight dissonance which, cre which creates more like a screaming kind of sound which is what we're getting here okay so we get that sort of unison bend there and then we're gonna hold and keep basically picking the seventh fret of G on top at the unison at, at the bend there and then we're gonna progressively bring it back down okay now it goes on for about a couple of bars what I suggest you do listen to the song and try to match that sort of that gradual bring down uh, of the bend on there right then what happens then we play the fifth fret of B and then we hit the eighth fret of B with a bend up straight up there okay so beta bend on the eighth fret of B then we're gonna go from pull off from the eighth five of B then hit the seventh of G and then into the fifth of B then we're gonna go to the seventh of G. Then we're gonna do the seven five. So seven five actually on the G pull off. I'm gonna do that twice. And then we're gonna go to the seventh of D. Back to the seventh of G. Then we're gonna go to the seventh of D. Do it that twice. So seven five seven five twice and finish off on the seventh of A. Okay. So what I suggest we do here, we uh, have a quick look at this uh, at this part with some tabs. Right, okay, so now let's have a look at the second leg. This is probably my favorite leg, one of my favorite Dave Murray legs. 
All right, so let's have a look at first this one. So this is basically calling a lot of legato playing. I would probably advise on this one. I didn't do it on the video, but actually probably would help if you actually switch to your um, to your neck pickup. But for now, I'll just keep it on the on the. Actually, no, I will switch it to the neck pickup so you get a, a slightly more rounded kind of sound. Right. Okay. Let's have a look at this leg. Okay, so let's have a look at this great little lick. Now this is one of those licks that looks super impressive. It actually isn't that difficult to execute if you practice it slowly and build up the stamina in your left hand. And it's actually one of those flashy licks that you can reuse in your own context, all right? So let's have a quick look at what Dave is actually doing on this part. So we're basically starting off on the eighth fret of E and we're pulling off into the fifth of E and then pulling back off into the open E, so. Okay, so. All right, then we're going to the seventh of A, uh, E, sorry, and doing the same movement, seven, five, and then pull off into the E. Okay, now, it's a very, very quick little lick when you listen to the song. Now, one of the things I do when I play this is I actually only pick at the start of the lick, and I don't, then I don't pick. It's all hammers and pull-offs, so here you go. Okay, and that's basically what I do. So I actually pick the first note and after that nothing's picked. All is actually played as legato, which is very much in the essence of Dave Murray's playing, which is a very, he's a very fluid kind of legato type player. So this is a perfect example of a lick like that. So in terms of the number, you can see it on the tabs, but in terms of the times he, he goes through that lick, uh, he plays basically, it's in, tri it's in triplets, uh, semi-quavers. So he's playing, uh, he's playing eight, a group of eight in the first bar and then a group of four in the second one before sliding from the eight of B into the, or sliding straight into the tenth of B and holding that note, okay? So the way to count it, count as a group of four and then a group of five, okay? So, it'd be, so what I'm counting is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then you just get up into that 10th fret with a lovely vibrato to finish off there. Okay, so that's for lick two. So what I suggest we do, we just have a quick look at this, uh, this passage with some tabs. Right, okay, so now we just basically, the final part of this, so like I said, these are very short, so it's a short song, so you know, the solos are pretty short, but very punchy. All right, so we finished off the previous part with those lovely legatos. We finished off on the 10th fret of B here. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna jump up onto the 14th fret of D. So let me actually play you the leg and I'll, I'll, go for, I'll take you from there. Okay, so let's have a look at what's happening here. So we're basically moving into that sort of position of the A minor pentatonic scale, which is effectively the fourth position of the A minor pentatonic scale. We're gonna start on the 14th fret of D, and then we're gonna go to the 12th fret of G, go 12, 14, 12 as a hammer pull off. Then go back to the 12th, a 14th fret of D. Then we're gonna go back to the 12th of G with another hammer on the 12th, 14. Then we're gonna go up to the 12th fret of, uh, of uh, sorry, B, and we're gonna introduce a little bit of the natural minor scale here, and we're gonna go 12, 13, 12, and back on the 14th of G. Then we're gonna go back onto the 12th of uh, B, and we're gonna go 12, 13, 15. And we're gonna carry this on going on the 12, 13, 12 of E. And then we're gonna finish off with a great bend on the on this 15th fret of, um, of uh, E, which is basically bending the flat seventh of A minor into A, so we're bending into the root, okay? So what I propose we do, just have a quick look at this final uh, Dave Murray lick with some tabs. Right, so after Dave Murray's fireworks, then comes in Adrian Smith's fireworks. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm a big, big sucker for, Dave, uh, for, for Adrian Smith. I, lo I love his solos. Uh, I do love Dave Murray as well because he's very, he's instant, instantly recognizable as well. But I've always had a soft spot for uh, for Adrian Smith just because I love the way he builds his solos. He's a much more controlled kind of player. Dave Murray is just like like sort of a little bit of the fury that just go, goes off, whereas Adrian just brings it back down a little bit. Uh, so I've always loved that kind of the the, the way the, the two work together is phenomenal. Right. So let's have a look at the first slick that Adrian is bringing in, and then we'll break that we'll break it down.
Okay, so what's happening on this lake then? So we're basically pulling off from the 15th of E, B sorry, into the 12th of B and then into the open string. So similar to actually what Dave was doing from the A. And then we're going to the 15th of B and doing the same thing. So again, I'm actually just... I'm actually just picking once or picking the first time and then after that I'm just letting it go. All right, and it goes on for about two bars. There you go, all right? So what I propose we do is just have a look. So basically, just again, re-explain, it's 15, 12 open, and then it's 15, 14 open, okay? Into the B. Try to keep this clean. It's a difficult little lick to keep clean because of the sort of constant sort of open strings coming into it. But anyway, let's have a quick look at this, um, at this uh, lick with, um, with some tabs. Right, so after that first initial play, uh, uh, the initial little lick that Adrian uses, he carries on with the whole idea of sort of open strings, uh, open strings sort of uh, uh, legato playing. So let's have a look at the lick he plays here. Okay, so what we're doing here is basically all going down the B minor scale and we're just sort of playing a, sort of like a sequence using constantly the open, open uh, B string as a pedal note. So we're going from the 12th fret into the 10, so into the open, 10 into the open, 8 into the open, back to the 10th, then into the 8th, into the 7th, 5, 7, back to the 5, back to the 7, 8, 7, and then we hit the sixth of G with a whammy bar sort of pull down if we can on that one. Okay, so that's basically lick number two. So let's do this. Let's have a quick look at it with some tabs. Right, okay, so let's have a look at the third part of this solo. Uh, let me play it first and then we'll break it down. Right, so what's happening here, after all that flurry of sort of legato playing, sort of quite, kind of quite spacey kind of sound that he uses, he's coming back into, he's bringing the solo back down to a much more sort of bluesy kind of territory. So let's have a look at what actually happening. So we're in B minor, remember we're in B minor in this case, and in this case we're going to be playing a little bit of Dorian as well, B Dorian. So we're starting on the 9th fret of D, then we hit that again, then we go into the 7th of G, then we hit into the 10th of B and we go 10, 9, 7 on the B. Then we're gonna hit the 9th of G. Then we're gonna go back onto the 9th of uh, B. So we're bringing in the major 6th here, so a bit of Dorian. Then into the 9th of G. And back into the 7th of B. Then we're gonna go into the 10th of G and play some bluesy notes here. So we're gonna go 10, 9, 7 on the G. And then hit the 9th of D. Then we're gonna pull off on the 9, 7 of G. Then 9, 7 of D. Then we're gonna go nine, seven, five on the A. And I tend to slide into that note. With some vibrato there. You can, also put, you can also put a bit of whammy bar if you want. So that was for lick three of Adrian Soda. Why don't we have a quick look at this with some tabs. Right, okay, so let's have a look at the final part. Again, we're staying very much into sort of bluesy territory for this final part uh, with a lovely little screaming bend at the end. All right, so let's have a look. Okay, so this whole part here, what Adrian's actually doing, if you listen to the recording, he's actually picking a lot of the, the big notes at the beginning of this lick with some pinched harmonics. So if, if you haven't learned to do pinch harmonics, it's a time to actually look into pinch harmonics. Remember with pinch harmonics, you wanna basically pick your notes 
And as you pick, the skin of your thumb should basically just touch the string as it goes off as well. So it creates that extra bit of harmonics as you're going off the string and create that kind of screaming sound. Obviously, it works better if you've got a high gain or some kind of a boost on your lead sound so that it really brings out the screaming sound, okay? So let's have a look at what Adrian's actually doing on this bit. He plays the seventh fret of B with a harmonic. Try to get it there. Then he goes to the tenth of G. Nice harmonic there. Then to the seventh of G. And then into the ninth. Yeah. Then he goes nine eight seven on the D. Nine eight seven on the uh, on the A. And then he basically on the when he hits that seven, he hits a quick hammer on to the nine and back on the seven. Right. And then from here we slide out of nowhere onto the sixteenth. So we're moving away from there onto the sixteenth of G. Then onto the fifteenth of B. Then we go to the 17th of uh, B, then we bend that 17, release it, play the 15th of B, and then we finish with the final bend going on to the 17th of E, which is basically bending the, a, the note A, which is the flat 7th of B, so we're bending back into the root note, okay? And at this point, the song goes back to... into that riff. All right, so that was basically Adrian Smith's solo. I suggest we have a quick look at uh, how to play this part uh, with some tabs. Right, guys, okay, well, that was bas that's basically it for those two solos of uh, Dave Murray and Adrian Smith on, on uh, Aces High. Uh, like I said, this isn't the most difficult solo to play, but it's a lot of fun to play as well. Uh, I've played this live uh, in, in some covers, covers band I had, a tribute band I had a, what, a few years ago, and it was always a great one to play. Uh, the whole song is just so much fun. So I will be doing a rhythm, rhythm lesson as well, so you get to understand a little bit what's going on under the rhythms. I'll do a lesson where you hear both guitars as well, because obviously there's a lot of harmonies uh, on the rhythms of this particular song. Anyway, like I said, these solos are meant for you to sort of take some ideas, look at the analysis of what's going on in those solos, take some of those licks and make them your own. Watch how those great players actually sort of maneuver through a lot of effectively, a lot of pentatonic type of ideas, bluesy ideas, and how they transpose it into the context of metal. All right. I know for a fact that when I was learning, you know, to play in my early days, this, these kind of solos were really helpful because, you know, they were, they were easier to get your teeth into. Anyway, until next time, uh, stay safe and uh, stay metal.